broadcast live. Yo, we out here at the Cotton Fist Essentials. Got the homeboy Ricky. It's happening. It's the first one of the year. Four months to make it come to life. And um, we about to give you the Cotton Fist Essentials with the homeboy Rick. Yeah, it's we're happening. here. Bless, bless, bless. Nice one. Perfect. Nice one. How hard has it been to just put the lineup together with all those people? I mean, managing it. Um, I mean, a big question is that's come out is how's everyone going to get on the stage? You know, yeah. how are you working that with regards to the lineup? Yeah, I mean, we got two stages. Okay. So, with two stages, we have one upstairs here. Yeah. We got one downstairs. Okay. Um, okay. So there's plenty of space for everybody to do their thing. Yeah. Uh, right. You know, 20 minute slots, 30 minute slots. Okay. So it's nice, you know. Yeah. It's nice for everybody. Yeah. yeah. The most difficult thing was calling everybody. Mm. It's mm. so humbling. Like, and, and, you know, like I've never done stuff where I've needed too many people involved. So like you can be oblivious to the fact that there's people around that have done A, B and C for you or that you still need to do something for or that you need to just generally uh, pay back the energy that they give you. Yeah, so yeah. picking up the phone and calling each of these artists was the hardest thing I had to do because you have to remember how far back do I go with this person? Yeah, what yeah. did this person do for me? Yeah. And all of that comes into that conversation. It's the most humbling experience. Like I was telling my partner that this has been the most humbling experience, yeah. having to pick up phone calls and call people and ask them to come out and be on stage for you. And most of them just on, on the strength. Mm, you know, mm, mm, it's mm. truly humbling. And when someone says yes, and I know that I, I still owe you from two years back, yeah, yeah. and I haven't paid you back, or yeah, yeah. I didn't do that favor you asked me for, yeah. but you're willing to come through and do mine. Yeah, it's like truly, truly humbling. You realize this sort of brotherhood or whatever that we have, or, uh, our fellowship that we have as hip hop, is actually bigger than the individual. You know. And um, what what has taken it? so long to come to life. You've been talking about the Cotton Fest for years now. Yeah. What is taking it so long to come to life and finally like, okay, we're going live. Now I'm transitioning. Yeah. Like my transition has begun. Yeah. From being the person that needs to uh, invest everything in something that's just about them or just about me. Everything I was doing was like, it's just for me, just for me, just for me. And to the, towards the end of last year, I realized I gotta start doing stuff that's gonna make everybody look good. And before I was so reluctant to throw in that money, because mm. it's a money game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know how much it's gonna cost? Yeah. And it's like, this is how much it's gonna cost. Are you gonna keep the money and spend it on yourself, or are you gonna put it into something that's gonna be for everybody and lose? You know, mm. we're going into this knowing that for the first couple of events, you're gonna lose X amount. Mm. You know, mm. that's just the nature of the business. Mm. Mm. But. To be prepared to take that loss on, it takes a lot of growth, it takes a lot of growth. That's crazy, yeah? Um, so obviously with it, from being the first one, you know, um, there are a lot of questions, not only from myself, but from people. Yeah. So we got people out there to send us questions. How many questions? How are we? Got a, got I've only been seeing a couple of questions. I don't know. They, why don't they send me questions? They send you questions, they don't send me because questions. Because we ask these questions. Nobody and, sends and, me questions. And, and people think you're going to block them. So, oh. you know, <laughs> I mean, I don't know if you can beat me if up. If that happens. I don't know. I don't know if you can beat me up, you know, but like, uh, yeah, at, yeah. at least I can. I'm a little bit stronger than you. Of course. <laughs> Look at him. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to start off with the questions. You know, we got our cats from Twitter, Instagram and Facebook just hitting us up, asking us shit. And, um, and obviously, I'm sure you've answered this a million times. I'm going to get into it straight. Um, why is Casper not on the lineup? Um, there's a few people that's not on the lineup. Yeah, but why there's is Casper not on the lineup? There's quite a few. We, you know, so, you've got a lot of history with Casper. There's a lot of been equity trading throughout the years. You know, yeah. it, does, it's, it sticks out like a sore thumb. You called it, what did you call it? Equity trading? Equity trading. Sheesh. I need to learn this language. <laughs> I need to learn this corporate talk. E equity trading. But that's how you literally, you guys have literally like kind of developed your careers. Yeah, you know, so when, when he's hot, you know, you jump on him. When you're yeah. hot, you know, th really it's been a synergy of equity yeah. trading, which is called brotherhood in the most simplest form. Yeah. I think... Um, it gets some, easier after this. Yeah. I mean, you don't always need to... Like you would say, equity trade, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, 
and sometimes the situation just doesn't doesn't feel right. Mm -hmm. And when a situation doesn't feel right, you know, for me, I'm the type of person who's like, I'm only trying to do stuff that's like, that's like real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's got to be real from this point. Yeah, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. Like I've been going through a lot of stuff in the past 12 months, and it woke me up to like, shit's got to be real. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. So it can't just be about equity trading. Mm. If that makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So no, no, I don't want any more relationships like yeah, yeah. That, that's based on tit for tat. And it's weird because, like, you know, we get a lot of feedback for it, you know? Uh, 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 um, and it's like it's all on us, which is interesting. So it's like I know some stories need to stay in the streets mm -hmm. and they will always stay in the streets. Um, some things is just not for uh, public. Uh, consumption. Public consumption. Yeah. So I'm keeping I'm keeping personal relationships personal. Yeah. And I'm keeping business relationships business. So if something doesn't work out, I don't think it should. It's not personal. Okay. Okay. I mean, okay, we get it. If I that get makes it. sense. I mean, yeah. That's a, that's an encrypted answer. But like, that's not encrypted. <laughs> you know, that's yo, a good answer. You, you out here being highly encrypted. It, it is. Oh, okay. So let me sum it up. All it is is that. Is you that, know. are you asking the question? No, just so you, I understand, just I'm, I'm understand, I'm trying to break down your answer. So it's simply, with you saying, you saying that there's um, the relationship with yourself and, 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 and Casper basically has about being equity trading over the years and you feel that you, you, you want like, you want it, you want like a genuine sort of friendship? I don't know, it's, it's, I, I don't know whether you want yeah, a I would friendship love, or... Like, or I, would, I, would, I would love like real friendships right now. Okay. okay, okay. I would love real friendships and I would love my friendships not to be mixed with my, what we're doing on the business side. You, you get what I'm saying? I hear you. Like if I'm, if I'm not on Slicker and Slicker does a feature and I'm not on Slicker, it shouldn't affect our relationship, our, our, relationship, our personal relationship. Yeah. And no one from the outside should look at it like, oh Slicker, you didn't put Ricky on this program that you're doing. It means, you, it means you guys are beefing or you guys are fighting. Yeah, yeah. You know that's not the case all the time. I mean, I know. Some, sometimes there's sometimes there's a deeper story, but sometimes the deeper story doesn't need to come from anybody. Yeah. I mean, look, you weren't at Philip Moses Mabita, but you were in Durban. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. You know, it, so we we generally. I was I was I was actually in four in four cities that day. Yeah. Not just in Durban. Yeah. Durban yeah. was just a quick stop. Okay. Okay. But we're actually like everywhere that day. Right. So, um, but I mean, that's, you know, public, the stories are there for the public to consume yeah. and the public to get excited yeah, about yeah. small things that really aren't uh, factors. Um, and that's acceptable. So I don't even mind people asking that question, you know. Yeah. But what, what I would expect in this day and age with so much information given to us, people got to look a bit deeper than start look, looking on the surface, you know. Yeah. All that surface shit is done. That, that, that stuff, you know, shining up, a, polishing a piece of shit to make it look beautiful and present it to people and then believing that it's real, those days are over. Mm. You get what I'm saying? Mm. Those so, days are done. So essentially, part of your transition, which, well, from, an, from, from a creative transition, yeah. you know, we're saying, yo, I'm the one that's always been investing in me creatively. Yeah. And then part of your growth as a human being is also like part of the transition is the people I want in my spaces are people that genuinely also represent um, where I am mentally. And if they're not, it has to be strictly business. Yeah, I would say you're correct. Okay. That's a beautiful one. Okay. That's a beautiful way to put it. Okay. That's what you said. Beautiful. That's what you feel. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. Okay, cool. Yo, so obviously this event is happening in the middle of the city. A lot of people are saying we're going to be here. They love their phones. Is it going to be safe for them? How are we guaranteeing the safety out here? Yo, we're going to have 100 bomber jackets. Mm -hmm. There's security. Yeah. And then there's bomber jackets. Yeah. Security keep, make sure that everything runs smoothly. Yeah. The bomber jackets make sure people are safe. So everyone's going to be 100% safe. The saddest thing is like, Events used to be places where we're coming to rejoice, you know? And we also got to, um, at events, we also got to start looking how do we take care of people 
in the best way. Uh, and I think you got to double up, triple up on security and make sure your spaces are all covered. So that's what we're definitely doing here. But right. I mean, but the, the people that are in the city, they know that the city is not dangerous if you come into the city responsibly. Yeah. And if you're partying responsibly, the city is not dangerous. It's more dangerous if you want to loiter around, mm. or if you want to hang on the block, mm. or if you want to hang outside and not get a ticket and just chill outside. That's mm. when things start it's, it's, happening. It's not a bulla boot. No, you it's not. No, it's bullet. not that. Yeah, you got. Yeah. You got to avoid that. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. You know, you know that that weekend is the weekend of the Nas and the Lauren Hill concert. Mm -hmm, do you, mm -hmm. do you, does that even matter to you? No, not at all. Not, not, not at all. Okay, cool. That was a question too. So, um, <laughs> now that you're in the transition, are we getting an, an album just to close off the the close off the old Ricky, walk into the new Ricky? Uh, let's see. Like I've been really trying to focus on creating products mm. and um, and. Like um, and creating business, not just products, creating a like actual business. Mm -hmm. um, but music is a beautiful thing because you can work on music for three years, two years, yeah. five years if you want to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when you're ready to present, whatever you're ready to present, it will be presented, you know? Yeah. It's yeah. like Michelangelo. Michelangelo took four years to to create the Sistine Chapel, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's the approach, that's the approach with the music now. It's like, I want, I want every, mu every piece of music that I take out now from this point and every item that I drop, it needs to be like some art that, that we set and we thought about it and we felt good about, you know? So, we'll see. This year there might be something, but I always said I'll make an album every four years. I think it's four years now. It's ready. I think it's, it's four years. It's ready. You never know. Um, but just remember, it took Michelangelo four years to make the Sistine Chap. Just know that. <laughs> this is from a photographer, right? Obviously, I got the creatives buzzing. They want to know how can they get media passes. Is that is that just open or you have to be media? I guess you have to be. Yeah, you, well, you got to be media, but if you are just someone who's coming through and has a ticket and coming through and they want to bring a camera, to cover what's going on for your own purposes, you gotta send an email to to the Cotton Fest uh, email, which is on the the page, mm -hmm. and request a, a camera pass. Okay. But uh, media, there's gonna be specific media, but it's really about people coming through to enjoy the vibe. Yeah. You know, you can't have a hundred media. It's yeah. not necessary. Yeah. We, we are media. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah, every yeah. person that attends is the media. Be in the moment. Yeah. So you 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 sort of have to also try come through and be part of it, and we can get camera approvals. Right. That's a bit better. But we, you can't have a hundred uh, um, media outlets at, at your event these days, because everyone is media. Yeah. They, they, they're covering it as it's happening. You yeah, know? Yeah. So we're looking at it like that, you know? All right. Um, what inspires you shift from music to fashion? Um, obviously, you've always been the trendy guy, but like, just to actually say, I'm a print merchandise, I'm going to do exclusive drops, limited. Yeah. What inspired that? Um, I feel like with uh, music is very depending on what people want to hear mm. right now mm. and what they're hearing right now. Mm. Um, and it's like it's got its own sort of automatic cycle, right? With fashion, I'm able to become the disruptor that I like being, you know, mm. the person who sits at home trying to plot like how do we design this bag, how do we make this bag, yeah. or how do we make this t-shirt uh, in a way that everyone is going to want it because there's like sort of a science to creating the products yeah. too. It's not just having a product and saying, oh, I'm wearing this, yeah. it's cool, go get it. It doesn't really work like that, you know. Yeah. Anyone can wear a t-shirt and say, this is what I'm wearing, yeah. and people won't go get it, but there's like a science to making products that people are, are going to gravitate towards to and just love. Yeah. It's like you can constantly disrupt through fashion all the time. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and with music, I've tried to sort of be like a disruptor all yeah. the time. Yeah. And uh, it's like the attention span is so short. Yeah. But yeah. with a garment, it's like that can last, it lasts forever. That yeah. feeling of that garment lasts forever. And it, it automatically like gets handed down to the next generation below. Mm. They start designing things that are a bit similar, mm. and then three months later we think of something new. Mm. So mm. it's like I like that constant searching for 
something new yeah, all the yeah. time. And fashion gives you that ability to do that. You gotta, every three months, you can come with something different, which is amazing. All right. Um, we were just talking about women now and with the R. Kelly um, thing coming out and women having a louder voice, or at least, um, which, is, which, is, which, is, which is right. Um, someone asked, why don't you have any queers on the lineup? Why don't we have any? Yo, I, I'm I just asking the questions. Don't, we don't book according to sexual orientation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. like when we book people or I call them, I don't ask them if they're straight or if yeah. they're gay. They could be and everybody, people don't know. Everybody is everybody. Yeah. So we, we sort of, we don't classify okay. people according to their sexual orientation. Can people bring their own hubbly setup? No. No. Okay. No. Okay. This is a very <laughs> technical question. There are people, yo, this is some real shit. This is the cotton fist. This people, is a very technical people question. People have seen us. They haven't seen the cotton fist They'll before. Be, so, they, you know. they will be hardly available at the venue. All right, cool. Um, on the Insta, um, they say, is there time, is there time, is there time that you spent with the artist that, you've, that you feel you've developed that's going to be on stage on the day? Is the time that I've spent with an artist? Yes, yeah, there's someone that you feel that you've developed or assisted that's going to be on stage on the day. Well, we've got Frank Casino on stage. Mm -hmm. We've got the Big Hash. We've got uh, an artist from Cape Town that. By the way, I love, D, it. I love Big Hash. You put me on him. He's, oh, you love Big Hash now? I love he's his amazing. energy. Energy. The interview you guys did was amazing. Too. Yeah, he's. Yeah. I mean, he's he's like a, a representation of what the kids want and what the kids are doing right now. Yeah. And you, can, you can't fight that energy, nah. you know? You yeah. got to like support it and, 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 and make sure it shines. Yeah. So yeah. we definitely got Big Hash out here. Um, we got Frank closing one of the stages. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's, it's nice, you know? We got D. Kawala from Kailicha. Yeah, yeah. I really, like, my whole thing was like, we need to have a huge artist from Kailicha. Yeah, yeah, And yeah. D. Kawala is like the person I'm betting, I'm betting on nah. for this year, for 2019. That's dope, yeah. that's dope. Um, uh, will there be space for mosh pits? Of course. Yeah. You, you have to mosh pit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I saw a post like uh, a girl was like, I don't know how I'm going to handle the mosh pits. It's very simple. So what you, when the mosh pit, when it starts, you just got to take five steps this way. Yeah. Or five steps that way or move back a little bit. Let it, ca let it carry on for a little bit. Yeah. When, when it's done, you get back in. So All the right. mosh pits are always going to be happening. Like we can't avoid mosh pits now. Right. It's like that's our that's our hip hop thing. We used to have the hands up thing. Where yeah, we used to, yeah. Now and it's we used to be the we used to have the the roughneck shit. You know where? Yeah. Like this. That you was slicker than swatter camp. Like this. Yeah. So now it's the mosh pit. It's the so, mosh pit. You know. Shit. But I mean, I I'm, I couldn't handle the mosh pit when like when people started first started mosh pitting here. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't handle it before yeah. because it was like. Your phone can go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, your yeah. phone can fly out. Yeah, yeah. Your your shoes can get lost. Yeah, yeah. And then you realize, yo, I gotta embrace it. You gotta embrace and it. And then you lose more shoes yeah. and you, more yo, clothes get torn and there's more. You the one that got all those expensive clothes <laughs> and shit. So now it's your problem. <laughs> you know I mean? It becomes your problem. But I love it, man. Like when you, I love to see kids doing that type of thing. You know, people don't understand. Ten years ago, that wasn't happening. Mm -hmm. I think that um, it wasn't happening. Someone asked me. They said, "What do you think? Who's the next big artist?" And I, you know, I name guys, but I say there's no big artist. There's a new movement. Yeah. There's a new big movement that's coming. Yeah. There's new money. There's new tours. Yeah. There's new destinations that yeah. are coming um, in in the game for the young guys. There's something where someone has to unwrap it. Mm. Like there's always someone that unwraps it mm. and then it goes. Yeah. But um, but I mean, let's just say. The guy who's smelling it, the closest guy who's smelling it is mm -hmm. nasty, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. but, um, but I don't think there's even a new artist. Saying a new artist is a small thing. There's a new movement. There's a whole new movement. I mean, they've been pushing this new wave for a while. But like right now, and though. Right now, it's time. But right now, though. It's like time for it to it's, take. It's like it's just at the back door. Yeah. And, you know, you're hearing the sound, you got your, your, your ear on the door, yeah. and you're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone just has to unlock it. Well, that's what this is. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what this is. I think this is like, I could have done a one-man show mm. or something that was just like, um, let's make it about me or, or, or whatever. But this is trying to sort of merge those two worlds. And even though there'll be two stages, it's time for people to also choose like, I'm going to go see, I need to see Jay Marley. 
oh, oh, damn, Big Hash is over yeah. there at this time. Yeah. Okay, let me move to that stage. Let me, I need to see a PH. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I need to go see Uncle Party Time too. What time is Uncle Party Time playing? Yeah. You got to be able to give people the options now to be able to cross over mm. because mm. that world is in my world completely. Yeah. And, 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 and I'm, I'm grateful for the, for the, for the, for the youngins that have embraced me yeah. and, you know, continue to come to my house and give me motivation. Yeah. I give them motivation. Yeah. I'm grateful for that. I, like, I love those relationships because it's like, I'm starting to see where we were maybe uh, um, um, six years ago mm -hmm. and we didn't feel like we could reach out to somebody. Yeah, yeah. So now it's like, they can reach out at any moment and come yeah. into this space. Yeah. And I want them to take over the commercial scene. I need that new wave to take over the commercial scene fully. And when they do it, uh, we're going to look back on these platforms and say, This is it. At Cotton Fest, we, we mixed and it was wild. And we were mosh pitting, like, we were mosh pitting to Stogie T. Yeah, you get what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the vibe that I'm looking for. Broadcast live.